Hello, and welcome to this film, which is all about um, using your data sheet, basically, to predict whether reactions will happen or not. So hopefully by the end of this film, you'll be able to use the list of standard reduction potentials that you can find on your data sheet to predict whether or not a certain metal or halogen displacement reaction will take place. Now, it's entirely up to you. You don't have to use your data sheet. You could just memorize which metals are able to displace others or which halogens are able to displace others. But um, this information is on your data sheet for you if you, if you want. So, um, <clears throat> you've, as I say, you've got a choice. You can either use this list of reduction potentials, which isn't quite the same here as it is on your data sheet, but it's very similar. Or you can use your memory to some extent. Now, it's quite simple for the halogens because the most reactive halogens, so that is the ones that can displace others, are found at the top of group 7 or group 17, <clears throat> whereas the ones that can't displace others are found at the bottom. The trouble with the metals is it's not quite so simple because the metals are dotted all around the place. So that's where um, this list of reduction potentials can come in quite handy. Okay, well let's start off with a couple of examples. Um, we'll start with a halogen displacement reaction, one of the ones that we've attempted. Um, and this is when we mix chlorine water and potassium bromide. Now if we just go to this list of reduction potentials on our data sheet, we can find chlorine. Chlorine water is just chlorine dissolved in water, so we're talking about the element chlorine. We can find potassium, potassium ions are there, and we can find bromide ions, which are here. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> if I'm mixing chlorine with potassium bromide, chlorine wants to gain electrons to turn into chloride ions. Okay. Potassium also wants to gain electrons to turn into potassium. So um, there's no way that those two things can react together. Okay. So we're going to ignore the potassium. In fact, the potassium is just the spectator ion in this reaction, as we've seen in the halogen displacements film. Okay, so we're left with chlorine possibly being able to react with bromide. If that were to happen, then the bromide would turn into bromine and the chlorine would turn into chloride. And as you can see, if I highlight those things on my data sheet and draw a little kind of loop showing which way these things are going, this loop is clockwise, okay? So because this is a clockwise loop, that tells us that chlorine will react with bromide. It will displace bromide from solution and will make bromine and chloride ions. So in other words, chlorine will gain two electrons and turn into two chloride ions, whilst two bromide ions will turn into bromine and two electrons. So these electrons that the bromine releases, that the bromide ions release, can be gained by the chlorine to form chloride. Okay? And as for saying, well, what would we see happening in this reaction? Well, this data sheet also kind of allows us to see that because we can now look up what bromine looks like when it's dissolved in water. And we can see that the solution is going to turn orange. Okay? But the fact that this is a clockwise loop tells us that this displacement reaction can occur. Moving on to another halogen displacement reaction that we've studied, um, iodine water and potassium chloride this time. Remember the potassium isn't going to react with our halogen because the halogen wants to gain electrons and so would potassium if it was going to react. So we're looking at iodine potentially reacting with chloride ions. And if we think about what would happen if this reaction took place, we'd see that chloride would turn into chlorine. So that would be going that way. And iodine would be turning into iodide, so that's going that way. And we can see that this loop is now anti-clockwise, so we can say that this displacement reaction would not take place. Another way of looking at it, which is the memory way, is to say, well, iodine's lower down the group, group 17, than chlorine is, so iodine won't be able to displace chloride ions from their solution. Okay, but as I said before, which way you remember this is entirely up to you. But, as I've also said before, this data sheet, this way of using the data sheet becomes a bit more powerful when you're talking about metals. Because 
it's not so easy to remember which metals will displace others okay unless you remember the entire reactivity series and that's quite difficult okay so if we look at zinc and copper nitrate the zinc equation is uh, down here okay um, we've got zinc that we're starting with not zinc ions because we're placing zinc into a solution of copper ions so we've got copper ions and not copper okay if the copper ions were to react and turn into copper they'd have to go that way okay and the zinc would have to turn into zinc ions by going that way and we can see that that is a clockwise loop so yes we should expect to see a reaction happening here what would the half equations be? Well, copper two. Well, the half equations are actually given to us on the data sheet, which is also quite handy because it means we don't have to think about what they're going to be. But copper two plus plus two electrons is going to turn into copper, and zinc is going to turn into a zinc two plus ion and two electrons, thus providing the electrons that the copper needs for this reduction. Okay, what would we see happening? Well, the silvery grey solid would be dissolving; it would be forming a colourless solution whilst the blue solution would be fading because these copper ions are getting used up and we'd be making this salmon pink solid okay actually very rarely looks salmon pink but because it says salmon pink on the data sheet that's how we describe it okay here's another metal displacement reaction and this is between silver and magnesium nitrate will this displacement reaction happen well let's have a look and find these ions on our data sheet where's the silver ion silver ion is here but we're not using silver ions we're using silver atoms okay so silver would have to turn into the ion now this might happen if magnesium was above it because then we'd get a clockwise loop but magnesium is down here okay and we're starting off with magnesium ions because they're in the magnesium nitrate and they're turning into magnesium metal if the reaction is happening but because we've got an anti-clockwise loop we can decide that this reaction is not going to happen okay so all in all there what we've tried to do is we've tried to come up with well a number of different ways that you can predict whether a displacement reaction is going to happen or not you can remember which halogens are most likely to displace others quite easily by remembering that the most reactive ones or the ones that are best able to displace others are at the top of their group it's a bit harder for metals and so we've tried to use our data sheet to try and predict by seeing whether we get a clockwise or anti-clockwise loop um, to see whether the reactions will happen or not okay now strictly speaking this is kind of more moving into year 12 territory but hopefully by using your data sheet or in the way that I've shown you, you'll be able to um, maybe find it a bit easier to predict whether displacement reactions are going to happen or not. If there's anything on this film that you didn't understand, as usual, please come and ask a question. Or it would be great if you'd post a comment on, on the YouTube channel as well, just so that other people can see your question and what the answers were.